Thank you. Thank you, brother. Wow. God is so good. Amen. Amen. And it's so good to be here this morning with you, uh, Pastor Annette. Uh, we have, as our brother said, um, my wife and I and Pastor Annette have been connected by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, it's just one of those things where my wife and I said we have to pinch ourselves that we found another pastor of like mind and like spirit. Uh, so, so thankful because that's kind of rare in our area. Uh, there's not a lot of pastors that can really fit together and walk together and be in unity. And we feel such a unity in the spirit with Pastor Annette. Uh, it's absolutely amazing how good it is. The Bible says how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. The oil begins to flow. Amen. Yes. Whew, the oil begins to flow. We uh, met Pastor Annette, as our brother said, at uh, Maria's going home service. And Maria was such a fantastic, wonderful saint of the Lord. Um, and I, I'll never forget this. As you were sharing, brother, the Lord reminded me that she, uh, there was a lady that had left our church in a very bitter spirit, and she had some mental issues and had struggled a lot of her life. And she was went to Maria's for dinner, and and she said to Maria, "You have to leave that church. Get away from that church." And Maria said to her, "No, that's my church. <laughs> I love it." You know, because we've seen throughout the years so many people go to some other people and say, you should leave and give all these bad reports, and then all of a sudden, you know, before they leave. But Maria stood her ground and said, no, I'm not receiving that bad report. Amen. Amen. But uh, Pastor Annette and my wife and I have just had such great fellowship we have sensed the presence of God together. And that is what the Bible calls koinonia. That's fellowship in the spirit. You know, you kind of know when somebody's being really nice to you and just kind of being there, you know, and, and putting on their smile and they're trying to make you feel accepted. But then when the Holy Spirit touches your heart through a person Amen. and you feel the love of God coming Amen. through them to you that's that's a whole nother story Amen. Amen. Amen and that's what we feel through Pastor Annette we also uh, have likewise her passion for the Lord but also for the church Amen. to build the body of Christ Amen not to build our kingdom but to build his kingdom in the lives of people on the earth. Amen. We see that. We, we see people that want to grow their church in numbers. But when you grow a church in numbers, then you've just grown numbers. But Pastor Annette is one of those people, just like us, that is interested in every person. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So. We're, we're, we're so thankful. We, we were talking to her the other day on the phone and just feeling the presence of God on things that she was saying. And it's just amazing. So I'm so thankful to be here today to be able to minister the word to you. It's a privilege for me. Uh, I don't get out to preach very often. I don't get asked out to preach very often. Doesn't mean I'm not a good preacher. Uh, just means the opportunity is not there. <laughs> but I preach pretty much every week in our church and I preach my heart out. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, you know, David was the smallest and the ruddiest of the group, but God picked him. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so we're, I'm just really, really grateful to be here. Uh, Pastor Annette had said to me the other day, would you pray? about coming to preach. And uh, I immediately said to her, Pastor Annette, I don't have to pray. 
I want to come. And I want to come. And I believe it's God. And so this morning, while my wife and I were praying together, we pray together every morning, um, I felt such a peace. You know that deep peace that you feel down in your heart? A real deep peace. You know, I kind of lost that deep peace for a little while. But I found it again this morning. Amen. When God was, I, I believe God sent me here. Yes. Amen. I believe he sent me to you today. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And that what the Lord has put in my heart is going to uplift you. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm here to do. Amen. Uplift. Yes. Lift up the name of Jesus. And Hallelujah. We lift him up. He uplifts us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I, I wanted to just start this morning a little bit with uh, my personal testimony. Um, I was saved at the age of 23, and I was a drug addict and an alcoholic. And I was hooked on drugs, and I was hooked on some heavy drugs, and I had to drink uh, a lot all the time. And I didn't realize it back then, but I was stuffing the pain with the drugs and the alcohol and and it's funny now uh you know my kids look at me and they say oh dad you can't understand what's going on out there today and i said see you've only they've only known me as a pastor but they didn't know me before i was saved and before i was saved i was a devil if i found something to rebel against i rebelled against it and God got a hold of me at the age of 23. My fiance at that time had broken up with me right before our wedding. And uh, I was heartbroken. And the things of this life started to become uh, not, you know, like you go out to dinner and you have an appetizer. You know, that's supposed to kind of get you ready for what's to come. And I, I was not enjoying things in life anymore. Matter of fact, I was getting depressed. And I was also getting suicidal. I was about ready to take my life. And because I felt my whole life was wrapped up in my fiance. That was my dream for my life, was to get married and have kids. Well, the Lord stepped in. I was at the last rung of the rope. And the Lord uh, led me. My sister led me to him. My older sister led me to the Lord. She started telling me that Jesus could help me. And I was raised in a religious background. And I heard about Jesus all my life. And I went through all the sacraments. But I never experienced anything. And when my sister started telling me about Jesus, she said, John, you got to repent of your sin. Turn your heart over to him and let him take over. And I said, okay. And I prayed the prayer to receive Jesus into my heart. And I have to tell you, I felt like I hit the lottery. Yes. I mean, I, I just got so filled and overwhelmed with the love of God in my heart. I never felt love like that before. I came face to face with love. I mean, real love, pure love, not sexual, sensual, what can I get from you kind of love, but pure giving love. And I, I never felt that before in my life. I knew my parents loved me. I knew my sisters and brothers loved me. I knew my aunts and uncles loved me, but nobody loved me like that. And it was Jesus. Amen. And it was real. It was real. And so then I had an experience, and almost right after that, not too long after that, I started going to church, and my pastor started preaching the word and teaching us how to meet with God. And I had a meeting with the Lord, which I call was a repentance meeting. And while I was there seeking the Lord, the Spirit of God came on me and showed me a whole video of my life. And I saw how I rebelled against my mother, my father, my family, against everything in life that I could rebel against. It was like a whole video going off in my head. And then at the end of the video, I start, just started crying. I said, Lord, how could you forgive me for all of that? And he said, because I love you. And that was it. I wept for hours. Wept, cried, and cried because the love was overwhelming. Because he forgave me for all the things I did, all the people that I hurt, 
all the things that I stole, all the things that I broke, all the things that I smashed, all the relationships I ruined. Everything I did, I rebelled. I hated the church. I hated God. I hated people. My favorite weapon in a fight was a meat hook. And so I knew that God, when that love touched me, my whole life completely changed. And all my friends were drug addicts and alcoholics. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Nobody told me this. And he said, you got to get away from all your friends right now or you won't make it. And so I told all my friends, I said, I'm born again. I'm a Bible believer. I'm a water baptized, full of the Holy Ghost. I speak in tongues and I can't be around you because you're a bad influence in my life. And I was a bad influence in your life. And together we are trouble. And so all my friends said, wow, the drugs finally got to you. You're gone, you lost it. You know, they said St. Vincent's is down the street. You know, that's a hospital for people that need mental health. They say, you belong there now. There's probably a room waiting for you. And I said, I know you all think that I'm crazy, but this is real to me. Because I know what I did and I know who he is now. He's real. He's not just hanging on that cross anymore. Now he's living in my heart. And so I say goodbye to all my friends. Now, I was out every night partying and had friends all over the place. And uh, all of a sudden, now I'm home alone. <laughs> yeah, right? Come on. Now, I'm used to going out every night. My identity was in my friends and it was in all the people that I knew and all the places we would go and all the places we would hang out and the places we would race our cars and race our motorcycles. And uh, I even rode with the Hell Je Hell's Angels a couple of times. And uh, thank God I don't ride with them anymore. <laughs> now I just ride with the angels. <laughs> the hell part is gone, amen? <laughs> and so, uh, God, I was home alone. I said, God, what do I do? And he said, well, now it's time for me to rebuild you. And see, I'm, I'm a master mechanic. I'm a mechanic who has the master living in me. Amen. I'm a mechanic by trade. And I've been called a master mechanic, but I know the master is living in me. And I'm just a mechanic, amen? Yeah, amen. I fix things by the Holy Ghost. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. No, I'm really serious. I pray over things and God shows me what to do and I fix it. Yeah. You see, the anointing that God has given you will help you do what you're supposed to do in the natural and in the spirit. Amen. amen. So I said, what do I do, Lord? So what I did was I... I heard the voice of God and he said, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. And I said, whoa, I said, I think that means read my Bible. I, I, I think it means pray. I think it means stay alone. Stay alone. Now think about this. God sent Jesus out into the wilderness. The Bible says that he came back in the power of the Spirit. He came back in a greater anointing. I mean, if Jesus needs to go to the wilderness, sometimes we need to go to the wilderness. In other words, what God is saying to us is sometimes there's people we need to get away from for a season. Amen? For a season. Because we need to get along with God. And that's what I had. I had seven years of alone time with God. Because I was going to a church with four people. And all four were married. There was no women there for me. <laughs> Matter of fact, my mother made that clear. She said, you know, you're going to church where you're not going to find a wife. She said, you should go to bars. That's where the women are. <laughs> and I said, Mom, there ain't no good woman in bars. <laughs> Sorry if you go to bars, but maybe you should stop. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a quick end to that story my wife came to that church and I said see mom I told you so I finally for once in my life got to tell her I told you so <laughs> and of course some of you ladies know my wife is Pastor Mary but I dug into the word and I began to get revelation of God and who He is and who Jesus is and 
what he did on the cross for me and the blood that he shed and the, the body that was broken and that he paid the price for all of my sins and I begin to learn and I begin to have fellowship with God. I begin to get really close to the Lord and I'm telling you church for seven years God poured into me. For seven years, it took seven years for God to restore me of 23 years of wasted time. It took seven years and God restored me. I had blown my mind out with cocaine and other heavy drugs and I couldn't think, I couldn't put two thoughts together. But as I began to get into the Word and meditate on the Word, God began to restore my mind. Amen. And I began to memorize Scripture. I began to hide the Word down in my heart. And God began to restore me. See, I thought it was too late for me. I figured, well, I'll just be born again. I'll just go to church and, you know, whatever I can do to help the church, I'll just do that. You know, I'll set up the chairs and I'll, I'll set up the music and, you know, I'll take down and I'll clean and I'll do those kind of things. But little did I know that God was restoring me so that I could preach His Word, amen, and teach His Word. I had no idea what God was going to do with my life. But now He made me an oracle for Him, a mouthpiece for God. He said, hey, I took you out of the gutter and I put you up behind the pulpit so you can speak for me. I said, what? I said, do you realize, God, how dirty this mouth has been? And he said, no, that mouth is now clean. Because it's clean through the word that I have spoken to you. You are now clean. You are washed in the blood. Amen. And I cleaned your fountain. And what's coming out of your fountain now is going to be good. Amen. It's going to be right. It's going to be pure. And it's going to be life. I'm going to speak life through you. I'm going to create through you. I'm going to pour the Spirit out through you. You see, somebody once said that the Spirit of God will do more in you than through you. Well, I reject that thought. I say the Spirit of God will do so much in you so He can do more through you. Amen. 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 And so now I'm an encourager. Before I was a depression. When you got around me, you were down. But when you get around me now, you're going to get up. Amen. You're going to fly high. Hallelujah. You're going to go even above where the eagles would fly. Because God will bring you to the heights of the heavens. Hallelujah. He pulled me out of the pit so I can pull some other people out of the pit. Amen. Oh, and he put my feet on the rock to stay. I had seven years on the solid rock. And I began to realize who I am. See, my identity was in drugs, alcohol, my friends, partying, motorcycles, and fast cars. That was my identity. Oh, and also hunting. I loved to hunt. I had a whole, a whole arsenal of guns. And I sold all my guns so we could buy music equipment for the church. Hallelujah. Now, did you hear that? I sold my guns. <laughs> So we could buy music equipment for the church. I sold my little guns for a bigger gun. Amen. Because praise and worship shoots the devil down every time. Amen. Hallelujah. I know I was like, sell my guns. What do you mean? Sell my guns. Give up my motorcycles. Give up my cars. The Lord told me. Listen, it's all or nothing. I said, you're going to give it all up or I ain't taking you. Let that settle in. You give it all to me or I'll have none of you. I said, wow. I said, what a price to pay, Lord. And he said to me, Look at the price I paid to get you. I said, you know what? These guns and this money and these cars, and none of that is worth anything like having you. None of that even compares to you. 
None of it even comes close to you and to what you did in my heart in the last seven years. I was like, it's gone. I'll get rid of it all. And, and I got rid of it. I got rid of it all. It all went. I mean, I built Harleys. I built show bikes. I had four motorcycles at one time because I love motorcycles. I had a girlfriend told me years ago, she said, you love those motorcycles more than me. I said, you're right. I said, I do, I love them more than you. You can go, they're gonna stay. I know, that's, that's how bad things had, you know, that's how bad it was in my life, that material things had such a grip on me. And I didn't realize how much they were holding me back from God because of those things. Now, it's not bad to have material things, but it's bad when the material things have you. That's right. When you're owned by them, that's when they're bad. See, you know they don't own you when God says to you, I want you to give up a whole year's pay. And you say, yes, Lord. I don't know how I'm going to live, but I'll give up a whole year's pay. <laughs> Right. How am I going to eat? Because listen, I'm Italian. I know I don't look it, but I love to eat. My whole culture is centered around food. You take away food, you'll kill every Italian. <laughs> so, what Jesus has done in me. Oh, what he has done in me. There's no money can buy. There's no, there's no therapist that can do what Jesus did in me. Not that therapists are bad. Sometimes we need them. But there's no therapist that can do what's done in me. I want to share this testimony with you. See, the message today is about restoration. And I had no idea it was going to be about my restoration. But I was in high school, and uh, you know, I'm as you can tell, I'm kind of skinny, and uh, and we had gym, and I was in a brand new school, so I hadn't finished the gym yet. So they put us all into the auditorium, the whole high school, all four years would have gym together. Okay, that's like three thousand people in the school that I went to, and so we're all in gym. And you know, you get got to put on your gym shorts, and I don't know if they do that in school anymore, but uh, you got to put on your gym shorts, and you put on your t-shirt, and you come out. Well, there was this one kid in the school, and he was called the school uh, clown. And so what happened was, everybody was in the gym, and I was late, and so I was the last one out, and so I'm coming out the door, and now think of this, the whole school is facing me, and looking at me, and the class clown looks at me and points at me and starts laughing. Well, guess what happened? The whole school started laughing. You ever have 3,000 people laugh at you at once? Well, I sunk down inside of myself. I mean, there was no place to run. There was no place to go. And I went out there, and I want you to know this right now. I forgave that person. I forgave them. The Lord brought me to a place, a place where I released them. Amen. 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 And, uh, and so what happened was I didn't realize it, but the enemy hit me with rejection. I was hit head on with 3,000 people rejecting me immediately. Rejection hit me like a ton of bricks. And my sense of self-worth and self-esteem hit the floor. I mean, it was gone. I had no self-esteem and no self-worth. And then I realized that was why I did a lot of the things that I did because I felt worthless. And so the crazier things that I did, the more people that were crazy liked me. I did them for acceptance. I wanted to be accepted. A lot of our youth today are doing things because they want to be accepted. I hung around with a gang because I wanted to be accepted. I, I, they accepted me. I found acceptance in that. Well, the seven years that God was 
restoring me. He was restoring my sense of self-worth and self-esteem. You see, during school, I couldn't stand up and give an oral report. I would cut school the day I had to give an oral report. I couldn't, after that experience, I couldn't stand up in front of people anymore. But guess what? Guess who's got the last laugh now? Amen. I can stand here right in front of you, Amen. confident, secure, Amen. strong, anointed, Amen. called, and appointed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But see, it took God time to restore my self-esteem. And one of my favorite scriptures, I meditated on this Matthew 3.17 for three years. And that scripture says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I meditated on that scripture for three years. That was in my mind, in my mouth, on the front of my Bible, three years. I said it, I memorized it. I, I went over that scripture over and over and over until that thing got such a hold of me that I knew that I knew that I knew that anybody who was going to talk bad about me, anybody who was going to reject me, anybody who didn't like me, they were going to have a big problem because I was not going to receive it because I knew who I am in Christ. And I know what he did for me on that cross. You see, the Bible says in 1 Peter 3 that he redeemed us with the precious blood of of the Lamb. He bought us back. I've been blood washed and blood bought. He, in other words, the Bible says that He paid the highest price that could be paid. Listen, on high school and grammar school and teams, because I had steel pins in my ankle, I was the last person to be picked on a team. You know what it feels like when you have 20 kids in front of you, and of course they pick the biggest and the strongest first, and then they're coming down to the end, and then they look at you and they go, oh, okay, come on. <laughs> that don't feel so good. But I'm telling you, God told me, He picked me. <laughs> Hallelujah. He picked me. And He picked you. He picked you. Amen. No matter who rejected you, it doesn't matter. He picked you. Right. Amen. He picked you. Not only did He pick you, you are hand-picked by God, the Bible says. Not only are you hand-picked, you are marvelous in His eyes. How are you doing, Sister Marvelous? <laughs> Oh yeah. When I look in the more in the mirror in the morning, I look and I go, whew. Wow. Marvelous. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I'm not kidding you. I look in that mirror, my daughters laugh. What is he doing in there? And I'm, I start speaking to myself through that mirror. You're handpicked by God. You're God's craftsmanship. You were made by God. You were special. I'm not special needs. I'm special. Hallelujah. You are the apple of God's eye. You are the love of his heart. You are the reason he died on that cross. Hallelujah. You are the reason he made heaven because he wants you to go there. Oh, glory to God. Oh, yeah. See, I heard your brother this morning say that it was challenging to get to church. I have to tell you, brother, I've learned something through the years. And this happened to me about 25 years ago. And it's never been challenging for me to get to church again. I get up and I start to speak the word of God over my life. And I say, I don't care what I feel. I don't care what I see. This body is going to church today. I'm going to make it there. You know why? Because God has ordained me to be there. Hallelujah. And when I get there, my spirit's going to get lifted up. And I'm going to lift somebody else up. Hallelujah. 
There's no devil in hell that's going to stop me. I don't care if I get a flat. I don't care if my engine blows up. I'll take the train. I'll take the bus. I'll yeah. rent a cab. I'll ride a bike. I'm going to get to fellowship with the saints. I'm going to make it there. Hallelujah. Man, when you get up and you start speaking about yourself that God wants to bless you, he said, don't forsake the gathering together as the manner of summons. Yeah. You know why he said that? Because when you get here, he wants to bless your socks off. Amen. He wants you to come in here blessed, and he wants you to go out blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless going in and bless going out. Amen. Well, I'm so glad you shared that this morning because I learned that 25 years ago. And I said, nothing's going to stop me from going to church. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. You see, that's a victorious, like you were saying, and speaking, overcoming yeah. attitude. Amen. It's an attitude of gratitude. I say to Jesus, I know what you did for me. I know who you are. And what you've done for me, I'm not going to let you down. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I got faith. I got faith. See, this is what happens to a lot of us. We look at the circumstances and they can tend to look bigger than God. Or some of us can use those things as an excuse not to do what God has called us to do. But God didn't say that there wasn't going to be any challenges right. in between. Right. But God did say, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Yes. And I want to talk about this just for a moment. This attitude of gratitude. This attitude of being an overcomer. Amen. Amen. Because you see... If you take the Word of God, and this is where, this is so important to hear right now. If you take the Word of God, and you read it, and you memorize it, and you speak it out of your mouth. As you memorize it, as you meditate on it, it becomes real. See right now, you're going to leave here today. And you're going to say, wow, that Pastor John, he's amazing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yes, you are. Because you're going to get something from God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because there's a divine download today. Because there's a deposit of God coming down in your life. Paul said, I have died to get to you so I can divinely download. What God has put in me, I want to put it in you. And so you see, this is where we miss it. I missed this for a lot of years. Because the seven years I spent with just the Lord, I meditated on it, I memorized. And then I came out and see what happened was I went on that grace for a lot of years. But you see, if you don't continually feed your spirit, eventually that grace begins to wither. And then I begin to start to get into trouble again. And then the Holy Spirit is so kind and so merciful. And He basically said to me, you got away from your first love. See, you, you got into a place where you loved the grace more than you loved me. And I said, wow. And of course I repented. And I started getting back into the Word. And back into meditating. And back into memorizing Scripture. And I know this just sounds like something just to do. But it is one of the most powerful things as a Christian you can do. Because, listen, I could preach a great message. And you could hear it. And you could go home. And you could tell somebody. Or you could look at each other around coffee downstairs. And say, wow, wasn't that great? And you could go back out into this world. And you will live exactly like you did the day before. And you'll see no change. And you'll see nothing happen. If you do this. If you'll meditate. If you'll memorize, if you'll skid in the word. See, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth. You know what that word in the Greek, know, means? Know, 
by a personal experience. See, I could tell you about my experience, but God wants you to have your own. Right. See, we were created to have a daily experience with God. But I meet a lot of Christians that I'll share my experiences and they'll say, oh, 10 years ago I felt that. And I look at them and I say, 10 years? Where have you been the last 10 years? Where'd you go? See, God met with me this morning. God met with me on the way here. God met with me during the worship. God is meeting with me right now. I feel His presence. God met me yesterday. God met me while I was walking my dog. I got a Rottweiler <laughs> that wants to kill people. <laughs> and I sent her out for training. And now she just growls at people. But God met me walking my growling Rottweiler. Because, you know, because I was praying, don't let her kill anybody so I don't get sued. But God wants to meet with you on a regular basis. You see what happens, what's happening in the church today is we, we've kind of become a bless me club. Let me go to church and get blessed. And that's good and that's fine and we need blessing and God wants to bless us. But God wants to meet with you. God wants to meet with you. God wants a regular meeting with you. God loves being with you. Sometimes I don't like being with myself. I say, God, how can you like being with me? But He loves us. He loves us just the way we are. You see, He don't want us to change ourselves. See, the church has become a self-help club. But that's not the Bible. That's not the Gospel. The Gospel says... You go to God, I go to God, and God changes us. God changes us. Yeah. See, in the beginning of our marriage, I tried to make my wife become my mother. <laughs> You're laughing, brother. That was painful, man. <laughs> but I can laugh with you now. See, every man tries to make his wife become his mother when they first get married. See, my mother cooked for me. My mother cleaned for me. My mother went to the bank for me. My mother did my laundry. My mother did everything. And when I got married, I didn't realize it, but I expected my wife to do the same things that my mother did. And the revelation hit me one day in the middle of a big fight when my wife said, I ain't your mother. <laughs> oh yeah I am not your mother boy those words hit me and sunk down inside and I said oh Jesus forgive me and I hope she can forgive me but for the last 10 years I've been trying to make her into my mother and she's not supposed to be my mother she's supposed to be my wife and we're supposed to work and serve and do things together. Amen. Amen. So guess what I did? I became, instead of a master mechanic, I became a master vacuumer. <laughs> she didn't ask me anymore. I threw the garbage. I was waiting for her to throw the garbage before I threw the garbage. I cleaned the toilet. I cleaned the shower. I cleaned the bathroom. I cleaned the living room. I cleaned the bedroom. I cleaned everything. I started cooking. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Do you understand? This is what repentance looks like. Instead of me being angry and upset and resentful at her for not doing the things that I thought she should do, that she should be like my mother, repentance is... You do the complete opposite thing. You do a complete turnaround. So instead of her expecting her to do those things, I did the things that I expected her to do. Amen. That's called repentance. That's a turnaround. That's a comeback. That's an overcomer. Hallelujah. You should see how proficient I am at vacuuming. 
I also found while I vacuum, I can praise the Lord. And I'm going, yes, it, hallelujah. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I begin to praise God with that vacuum. Somebody said to me, don't give up your day job for singing. <laughs> but with the vacuum going, nobody can hear me. <laughs> Hallelujah, except the Lord. Amen. Amen. But that's, re that's what real repentance is. But I want to get back to this meditation because I, I feel this so strong in my heart that you may be missing something in your life. You're looking for more. You, you've been saved for a while. You, you go to church. You're faithful going to church. You're faithful tithing. You're faithful giving offerings. You serve in the church. You know You know this is your church. You love Pastor Annette. And you love the people here. You know, but your day is just kind of ho-hum. You know? Your days are, are not filled with the fire of God. Your days are not filled with the excitement that the Holy Spirit brings into your life and one major thing is we're not leading other people to the Lord you see because if the fire is low or gone out nobody gets warm nothing can be cooked unless you got a certain height on your fire see the brother talked about brooding well, when, the, when the, the mother hen broods over the eggs, she creates a warmth. And that warmth makes them grow. Mm -hmm. And that warmth makes them want to come out of the egg. Mm -hmm. Amen. Break out of their shell. Meditation and memorizing causes you to break out of your shell. It causes you, when you get around people, you don't feel tongue-tied. You feel loose and free. You feel a liberty to share I have to tell you, sometimes I'll go to work and people will look at me and say, why are you so happy? Don't you see the gas prices? Don't you see the border? Don't you see what's going on in the schools? And I say, absolutely, I see it, but I choose not to look at it. I looked into my Bible this morning and it says God's got everything under control. Amen. Hallelujah. It says God is bigger than all these little things that people are doing on the earth. My God rules and reigns in the heavens and in the earth below. He's got it all under control. I pray about it, but I give it to the Lord. And when the opportunity comes, and it does come, when somebody asks me how do I feel about it, I tell them. And I don't go, oh, well, you know, that's just my opinion. I say, no, this is God's opinion about it. Right. Whether you like it or not, it's God's opinion. Hallelujah. Ooh, that doesn't go over too well sometimes. <laughs> but you know what? It's too bad. It's too bad. Yes. You don't like it, you don't have to like it. I'm not going to force you to like it. I'm not going to push it on you, but darn, you ain't going to take away my freedom of speech. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Sorry about that, sister. Hallelujah. You can try, but listen. Uh, it was John and Peter. They tried to shut them up. They tried to put them in jail. When they came out of jail, they said, Lord, they're trying to shut us up. But we need boldness, Lord. See, they went to God and they had that meeting with God and God gave them boldness. And the Bible says they went all over preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus. And 5,000 people got saved under their ministry. Hallelujah. I claim over this church that the Spirit of God is going to hit you so hard because you're going to meditate and you're going to memorize that the Spirit of God is going to quicken you so strong you're going to go out and you're not going to be able to keep your mouth shut. Amen. You're going to have words of knowledge and words of wisdom and the gift of healing is going to flow through you. And you know why? Because you're an influencer. But you see, you've got to be influenced first. And that's where that meditation and memorization, I know it sounds like such a simple thing, but listen, the menial leads you to the meaningful. 
Did you catch that? Yeah. The menial leads you to the meaningful. Yeah. I remember being in the church and pastor said, uh, who can set up? There's only four people in the church. <laughs> so everybody moved back and I was sitting in the front. <laughs> I said, okay, pastor, I'll do it. Who can clean the toilets? And everybody moved back. Said, pastor, I'll do it. We're going to have a tent crusade. Who can set up the tent? And everybody moved back. Pastor, I'll do it. And then I realized, as I was serving and helping, it was something that was growing in my spirit, and it was called faithfulness. You have to be filled with faith to be faithful. Amen? And so for 15 years, we had a church pretty much this size, and downstairs was a closet. And you see everything here? I took it all downstairs. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Friday night, and every Wednesday and every Friday and every Sunday, I brought it back up. And at the end of the night, at the end of the day, I bring it back down, and then I brought it back up. I did that for 15 years. And the pastor said to me after 15 years, he said, Brother, I feel there's a call on your life to be an elder. I said, Praise the Lord, Pastor. I'll be whatever you want me to be. And I'll not be whatever you don't want me to be. How do you like that one? And so then one day the pastor said, I feel like you should be an assistant pastor. And I said, well, praise the Lord, pastor. I'll be that for you. And then one day the Lord spoke to me through a man of God who was saved for 50 years, had a ministry that went around the world. And he came to our little church and he looked at me and he pointed at me and he said, pastor, he's a pastor. And I said, I don't want that. <laughs> because one day I sat in my pastor's house and I was watching his kids and he went away and he had a big recliner and I said, let me see what it feels like to be the pastor. <laughs> and I sat down in that chair and every devil in hell began to come against me. Lust and fear and greed and all these things began to attack my mind. I jumped out of that chair. I said, I never want to be a pastor. I don't want that. You can keep it, Lord. Well, of course, the Holy Spirit began to speak to my heart and say, listen, I'm going to teach you how to warfare, and I'm also going to bring people around you that will be a hedge of protection. And so, of course, the Lord did that over time. Amen. 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 But the Bible says this, and we can miss it. We can miss it. We can miss it. This is going to be a life-changing day for you if you'll grab a hold of this. I can't do this for you. Pastor Annette can't do this for you. Your mother can't do this for you. Your brother can't do this for you. Your sister, your elder, your assistant pastor can't do this for you. You got to take the word and begin to meditate on it. And begin to put your mind on it. And begin to think it. And then speak it out of your mouth. Speak it. Whether you feel like it or not. See, because that's faith. You got to do it in faith. You know, it's kind of like you start out with a desire. And then once you do it for a little while, what happens is it becomes a delight. Yeah. And then from a delight, it becomes a divine influence. You become divinely influenced. And then you become an influencer. Hallelujah. You, you're saying to me right now, Pastor John, I never did that before. I have no clue. What does that mean? How do you do that? I'm going to teach you right now. Okay, take a scripture. Let's say John 3.16. I sit down in my prayer chair. I sit down in my prayer chair and I close my eyes and I begin to say softly, John, 3.16 John 3.16 John Would you do this with me? Would you close your eyes? And repeat with me John 3.16 Do it again John 3.16 And then I go this Then I go like this For God 
And then I say, John 3.16, for God. Would you do that with me? John 3.16, for God. And then I'll add to it, John 3.16, for God so loved. Would you do that with me? John 3.16, for God so loved. And then you take the rest of the scripture and you begin to add to it. You go over that and over that and over that. And when you go outside, you start saying to yourself, John 3.16, for God so loved. And if you get to the part of the world, you can say it like this, and I did this for a while, for God so loved John. For God so loved John, that's me, John. For God so loved John. For God so loved me. And then when I went out, I look on around, I said, for God so loved Sal. For God so loved Lana. For God so loved. And I'll tell you, people that I was like, mm, I don't know about them, love began to fill my heart for them. Love began. And then all of a sudden, I, I get into prayer, and I see their face, and I start to cry. Oh, God, you love them, but they don't love, they don't know you. They don't know your love. They don't know how much you love them. God, God, you so love them. John 3.16, Lord. John 3.16. John 3.16, Lord. See, my heart began to change. My heart began to soften for people. People that I used to hate. People that I used to be mad at. People that I resent for. That, that guy that uh, laughed at me in the school, I saw him one time on a bus, and I said to him, Jesus loves you. And he looked at me, and he said, oh, get out of the way. Get away from me. And I said, well, that's okay. I just wanted you to know today that Jesus loves you and so do I. Because God put love in my heart for you. <laughs> he, he had a hard time. See, a lot of times people can't face love because they feel so bad about themselves. They, they don't come out and say it, but they say, I'm, they feel this. And if you were to read in their mind, they would say, I'm unworthy. You can't love me. But they won't come out and say that, but they're feeling that, they're thinking that, and they're believing that. <laughs> Meditation. Don't miss God. If we don't meditate, memorize, we will miss God. You know, there's an old song that goes like this. And I don't know if it's a good song or a bad song. So if it's a bad song, don't laugh. Put another log on the fire. Put some more bacon on the grill. I don't know the rest of it. I heard it years ago before I was saved. You're laughing, Joey. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know what it is? That song, put another log. That came into my spirit one day, and I said, oh, God, I'm backsliding. I'm going back to my old days. And the Lord said, no, you're not backsliding. I'm showing you something. It, when you take my word, it's like putting another log on the fire. For a little while, the fire begins to smolder and smoke and almost look like it's not doing that good. But then all of a sudden, poof, the fire comes up. And see, this is why a lot of Christians today are not on fire. They pray, you know, we pray, and that's a good prayer. Send the fire, Lord. Set us on fire. And you know what God is doing? Get into my word. The fire's there. Put my word in your heart. Meditate. Memorize. The fire is there. The fire is there. I've been saved for almost 40 years. Still on fire. Because of this meditation and memorization and speaking the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 
Now, let me tell you, all heaven is not going to drop down on you while I share this. See, because the devil wants you to be in unbelief right now. He wants you to think it's too easy. It's too little. And I'm, let me tell you, the devil comes to church. He does. And he doesn't come in a bodily form, but he comes in a spirit. And he starts to work on us. This is so powerful, church. I have to tell you this. Uh, I was meditating on this scripture, and I'm, I'm going to close with this. You've been so good to hang in there with me. My daughter says I'm so long-winded. She said, she said, no wonder nobody's in your church. You preach too long. <laughs> I love her to death. I want to kill her sometimes. <laughs> I got a hold of this scripture. And this scripture got a hold of me. And I've been, I got it on my refrigerator. And I go to my refrigerator every morning. And I, I get my protein shake. But I touch that scripture. I touch it. Because it says that God added to the church daily. I should be saved. And since I've been sharing, touching that. And saying that and meditating on that, new people have been coming to the church. Amen. <laughs> My wife calls me and she said, Guess what, hun? I said, What? She was all excited. I said, She must have a new dress. <laughs> or she found a deal at Lord and Taylor, right? <laughs> and she goes, I just led the uh, person that helped my brother to the Lord. I just led her to the Lord. And guess what, hon? I said, what? She sent me a text a few hours later and said, I am changed. Thank you for praying for me and with me. Thank you. Yeah. And so you see, church, this is so powerful. It works for the salvation. This church can be full to overflowing. You need to grab a hold of that scripture and begin to speak it. See, because what happens is over a period of time, we begin to settle in to the way things are. This is just the way our church is. This is just a bunch of really good people. But you see, my God is a multiplying God. He's an overflowing God. <laughs> He's an extravagant God. He loves people. He loves a lot of people. Not that you're bad, but see, what happens is if we don't see results right away, we let our faith wane. I know this is my first closing. I usually close three or four times. But we let our faith wane. We let it go down because we don't see anything. You know? And, and I, I believe me, I've said in the church, in our church, I said we've been here seven years with 50 people. And, you know, and the guy down the street's got 300. Now, not that we're comparing our churches, but, you know, you got to look after a while and say, something's going on down there that ain't going on over here. And now I know they got smoke machines and they got, you know, they got the lights and everything. And, and that's all good. And, you know, God can use that. But see, I'm more interested in more like 50 people I can count on instead of 500 I can just count right so when I get that scripture I'm saying God you're going to save people but you're going to radically save them and they're going to come to this church and they're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and they're going to get water baptized and they're going to be tongue talking Christians amen and they're going to be praying and they're going to be fast and they're going to be seeking you and there's going to be such a fire in them and the grace is going to be so strong on their lives that they're going to be like a beacon walking through a dark land amen hallelujah put another log on the fire go again I want to say by the spirit of the Lord some of you here have given up it's not like you walk in and you say, I give up. But you've given up by your posture, by your look, by your attitude, by your faith. But the Lord's here to tell you today, go another time. Amen. Amen. Okay. Go.
Go back again. Go back to the Word. Go back to prayer. Go back to fasting. Go back to seeking God. Turn off that TV. Turn it off. Could you imagine if the church and the amount of time they spent watching the TV meditated and read the Bible? Whoa. My God. I talked to a saint the other day and I said, how much do you watch TV? Because she said, Pastor, I'm depressed. Holy Spirit said to me, she's got the news on constantly in her house. She didn't tell me. I looked at her and I said, what's going on? She said, I got the news on in my house constantly. I said, the Lord knows. He showed me. Shut the news off and spend some time with Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on, man. If we keep watching that news, we're just going to be depressed. We're going to be down. You know what happens when you keep watching the news? You get what I call a sour mouth. And instead of positive things coming out of your mouth, and you want positive things to come out, but what comes out is this sourness. Because you're watching sour people doing sour things. Amen. 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 Would you stand up with me? I don't even know how long I preached. Wow. <laughs> And you were so good, you just kept amen at me. And I heard a couple of old me and old mine. <laughs> God loves you so much. He loves you, loves you, loves you so much. You are so loved by God. The day's going to come where you're going to come face to face with love. Hallelujah. Face to face. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to come where you're going to look at God and say, oh, God, look what I did. He's going to say, no, look what I did. He's going to say, look what I did. Amen. Amen. He's not going to condemn us. You are not condemned here today. Amen. The Bible says Jesus did not come to condemn. He came to save. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm starting a meditation club. I'm going to try to get it online or something or YouTube or I don't know what. A Christian meditation. Let me tell you, the Eastern people meditate. Yes. They know a secret that us as Christians, we can tap into. Amen? Amen. Now, we know they don't meditate to God, to Jesus, to the Savior, to the God of the earth. But they got the idea of the meditation. In the meditation, I, I, I can sense it on some people that you're, you're really disturbed, you know, not mentally disturbed, but just disturbed about life, about what's going on, about what's happening, you know. And this meditation is going to bring you into a place of peace and calmness. You're going to be calm. Let me tell you, a couple of years ago, a fire broke out in a, in a place where I work. I'm, I'm not a full-time pastor. I work a job, work on a farm. Fire broke out, and people were running left and right. And now I'm going to, where is that fire? We'll take, care, we'll take care of this. It's going to be all right. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. It's going to be all right. I found the source of the fire. A lightning had hit one of our lights on the street and sent power back into the building and blew up the light control box and fire broke out. Got the fire extinguisher. Put it out. Total peace. Everybody else was panicking. And I had peace. Some people looked at me and said, are you on drugs? Whatever you're taking, I want some. I said, no, I got the Prince of Peace. See, I meditate on Scripture, and I allow the peace of God to sink down into my heart. Let it sink down. you got to spend time. You know, the lottery, they say you got to be in it to win it. you got to be in it to win it. Amen. 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 Praise God. I feel like we got the right people here. Yeah. You're going to do this. Yeah. You're going to do this. Yeah. One real quick thing. If you don't plan it out, you won't do it. If you fail to plan, you've planned to fail. So pick a time. 
that you're going to do this. For me, the mornings is the best time, especially now. It's so beautiful outside. I go outside on my patio, take the scripture, meditate, and then I read it. I'm telling you, church, this is going to change your life forever. You will be addicted. You will form an addiction to the Word of God. How would you like this? Don't raise your hand. How would you like this? You wake up in the morning and all of a sudden the first thought in your mind is, I'm going to go hear the Word be preached today. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. I'm going to go hear the Word. I ran into the coffee shop. Someone said, where are you going? I'm going to church. I'm going to preach the Word today. Can you imagine if you go into the coffee shop and somebody says, where are you going to? I'm going to church over there. Over there. Where are you going? I'm going to church. I'm going to church. I'm just going to go. I don't know. I'm going to stay. I'm going to see somewhere I can slip out. You know, maybe during their offering, everybody's looking at the basket. I'll just run out. Come on, man. That can't be the church today. There's going to come such an excitement in your heart for church. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna speed here. You got a speeding ticket. Don't blame it on me. <laughs> because of the fire of God in your heart, I can't wait to get to church. Listen, somebody says you're the pastor. You can't. You gotta go to church. No, I don't. I can play hooky. My wife can preach circles around me. I can let her preach every week. I go play golf. I can't wait to get to church. Amen. Hallelujah, Father. I just want to thank you so much for this congregation for their openness, for their love for you, for their love for their pastor and men. Father, I want to thank you for the servants here. Lord, I came in here this morning and everybody was in their place doing their thing, preparing things for the service. That so blessed my heart this morning. God, you have established such a great work and a great people here. And Lord, I'm here to announce there's more to come. There's more to come. And, and through meditation and through confession of the scripture, through memorization, this place is going to grow. And the people that are in this church right now are going to be changed. And not that they're on fire, but the fire is going to get hotter. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you can't stand the heat, get away from the fire. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. I believe for fire, but that fire comes from deep within. It doesn't fall from heaven. When we pray that way, we're praying the wrong way. Fire comes from deep within. Jesus said these words, Father, out of your belly shall flow rivers. Yes. I want to say rivers of fire. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, don't let your church neglect this word and forget this word. Don't let them forget this word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray you would pour out your grace upon this people. Because you see their beloved pastor is in recovery right now. And I want to ask you to comfort the church. Be with them. Strengthen them. Bless them. I pray and release a blessing of comfort upon you today. Hallelujah. He is the comforter, the Holy Spirit. I release him in this place upon you today to comfort you. I have the power and authority to release. And I release him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus name. Amen. If there was anybody, I asked Pastor Annette if this was okay. If anybody would like prayer this morning, I want to pray for you. I want to believe God. Especially if you want the Holy Spirit to help you in meditation and in memorization. Hallelujah. So if you would come up front I want to pray for you. Thank you. And I want to pray a blessing on you. 
I want to believe God to meet your need, whatever the need is today. You need an icebreaker. Who's going to be the first icebreaker? There we go. Breaking that ice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.